In today's presentation, we will see the next set of DDL commands, the truncate, drop and rename commands. We know very well that SQL has four different sub-languages, the data definition language, the data manipulation language, the data control language and transaction control language. And we are now in the data definition language. We have already seen about create and alter commands elaborately. In this presentation, we will focus on truncate, drop and rename commands. At first, we will start with truncate DDL command. What is this truncate? The name itself says that we are going to remove all the rows from the table. Let's assume there exists a table and that table contains 1000 rows or 1000 entries. It means 1000 records are there. Now, when we want to remove all 1000 records at one go, then we can go for truncate command. The syntax is so simple. Truncate, the keyword, table the keyword because we are going to truncate the object here the object is table and simply provide the table name for example if we want to truncate the table student truncate table student so all rows from the table will be removed please take meticulous care before doing this operation because this cannot be rolled back since ddl commands are auto committed let's say we have a table like this the name of the table is student which contains id and name as the columns and we have some rows in the table as well. Now, after executing this command truncate table student, what happens? All the rows will be erased. But the table exists in the memory. Only the data portion are removed, not the schema. The structure remains. The table remains in the memory. After performing truncate also, we can add a column. We can remove a column. We can add new rows or we can add records into the database or we can add records into the table. Anything, whatever we wanted to perform, we can perform because the table itself is not dropped. Only all the rows have been removed. We know truncate deletes all the rows from the table. And the same task can also be accomplished using another command delete, which is a DML command. We can also remove all the entries from the table using delete DML command as well as truncate DDL command. Then what's the difference between this truncate DDL command and delete DML command? Generally, truncate is considered to be faster than delete. Anyway, don't worry about this now. When we see the delete DML command at that time, I will elaborate about this. So we are done with the truncate command. Let's now see what is the drop DDL command. We know in the truncate command, all rows were deleted. How it actually differs from drop? Let's first see the syntax. The syntax of drop. Drop keyword table, the object, the keyword space table name. This is similar to truncate. In truncate also, we had truncate table table name. Here it is drop table table name. So the example is drop table student. Now what happens when we use drop table student? Suppose if there exists a table like this student, which contains ID as the first column and name as the second column, and there also exists some data. After executing this command, we see this as the output. What is this? Nothing. There exists nothing from the memory. So drop removes the whole database or table indices, data and more. So it will be completely vanished from the memory. Even the structure is destroyed. So if you go for truncate, only rows are removed from the table. But if we go for drop, then it removes the whole database, the table indices, data and more. And also be advised that drop is also a DDL command. So we cannot roll back. Once you execute the commands, obviously DDL are auto committed, so there exists nothing from your memory. Even if we try to revoke, we will not be able to do that because that's the nature of how DDL commands work. So we are done with the drop DDL command. Let's now see the rename DDL command. The rename DDL command, the syntax is so easy. Rename old table name to keyword new table name. Say for example, if our table name is student. I'm going to use the rename keyword student, the old table name or the existing table name to keyword student underscore info, which is the new table name. Suppose if we have a table like this student, which contains two columns, ID and name. And after executing this command, we can see this particular table has been renamed as student underscore info with the same set of columns with the same set of data. Only modification that we have performed is the name of the table is changed. Now, is it a DDL command? Yes, because these ID and name are actually linked to student. This is dealing with the structure. Since the command is dealing with the structure of the table, so this is also a DDL command. 
So we have renamed the table here. And this is also like a simple English statement. Just see, rename student to student info. This is like rename the existing table student to a new table name student underscore info. That's the power of SQL. The commands are English-like statements. In this presentation, we have seen how to rename a table. While doing hands-on session, I will teach you how to rename a column in the table. And that's it guys. In this presentation, we have seen truncate, drop and rename. So far, we have completed all the DDL commands with the required examples and explanations. So we have seen how to create a table with constraints and without constraints. We have seen scenarios to alter the table. We have seen how to truncate, drop and rename a table. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.